Hey, this is Brother Jeff with eLearning Brothers, and welcome to this uh, short tutorial on how to get started with the game show game inside of uh, Edge Animate. And so in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to get started, how to update some of this stuff, how to update the questions, uh, possible choices, and different things like that. Now, the first thing you want to do is uh, navigate to the Edge Interactions. So if you could go to Activities or Edge Animate Interactions, in the future, there may be something called Edge Animate Games. Uh, you may want to navigate to that to get to the games, but as soon as I navigate to it, you'll notice the preview that comes up. In this preview, it'll look very similar to a Flash game, so if you've navigated to any Flash games and played around with any of the Flash games, it almost looks identical, but this is all HTML5. Um, and so this will work on tablets or uh, any other mobile device with the touchscreen, basically, and it's touchscreen optimized. So it will listen for tap events instead of mouse events and uh, function a lot better on tablets as well. So you can see we have our continue button. I'm just going to go ahead and hit continue. And we also have some uh, um, another continue button with some instructions here. You can update that. I'll show you how to do that. And then we have our different categories. So we have up to five categories, three rows per category. And all I have to do is basically select which category I want to choose from, um, select that category, and then it pops open with the questions. Now with the question, we have up to four different choices. Now these choices can also be uh, changed. You can have two choices for true or false. You can also have multiple selection, which allows you to choose more than one choice inside of here. If you get the answer correct, it will add that number of points for, uh, for the row to your uh, total points. It'll give you the correct feedback, and then you can hit continue. <clears throat> now you can choose a different answer. If you get it incorrect, it does not add the points, and it shows you the incorrect feedback, and all I have to do is hit continue to go back to the game board. Now I continue this until I've completed all five categories, all um, rows inside of my um, inside of my game show game. So let's talk about how to actually update this inside of Edge Animate. So there's two different project files and now you can choose either one depending on what you uh, are more familiar with or which one you uh, is. If you like to have just the template inside of Edge Animate that you can refer to later I would recommend using the Edge Animate CC template files or if you just want to open up the project then you can just download the project files right there. Now if I click on download for the Edge Animate CC template uh, it downloads this one file and all I have to do is come into Edge Animate and then click on where it says create from template. Um, if this one I've already imported or if this is a new update you may need to delete the old game show. Uh, let me go ahead and delete that <clears throat> and then you can come down to import to import the new game show. And once I've or if this is completely new you can do this as well go to import and then click open and now it becomes part of my templates. Now inside of the templates this is only available in Edge Animate CC so keep that in mind. But inside of here I can then use all these Edge Animate templates without having to download them from the library again. So I just basically select on one of these templates that I want to start from and then click open. Now at that point I save my project and I just update my project as though it were the project files um, inside just like if I was to download it uh, just the project files it would be the same way at that point so that's how you get started with the template now let's go ahead and download the project files and show you how to get download uh, started with the download files so I'm gonna click on project files and click on download <clears throat> and this will download a folder for me and I can then open up that folder and, and uh, start editing it from there so you can see that it's downloaded this folder to my desktop if I double click on it has all of my different uh, project files inside of there. To open this up inside of Edge, I find the file that uh, ends with .an, and uh, if I double click on that, it'll open my project inside of Edge Animate. Uh, now, the nice thing about this is I don't have to save it somewhere, save the project or anything like that. Um, it will basically just open up the project and I have everything contained within that folder. If you uh, start from a template, you'll need to save it inside of some folder somewhere else on your desktop or in, in, your, in your documents or anything like that. Now, once I have this open, you'll notice um, it basically, the way that this game works inside of Edge Animate is it uh, jumps to different points in the timeline. So if I take my timeline, which is this red line, and I come here, you can see that we have a title, um, we have instructions, we have game board, question one. 
all the way up to question 15. Well, if I was to just take my little playhead here and just jump to those certain points inside of the timeline, you can see how we're doing the layouts inside of this game here. Now, instead of jumping to the different points of the timeline, we actually make it a little bit easier for you. Um, we have it set up inside of these symbols here. We have it set up so you can just navigate through the movie clips straight from the top to the bottom here and just update your content at that point. And all you have to do is double click to get into the to the um, to the movie clip. If I double click to get into the category titles, for example, I have all five of my category titles that I can just come in here and change out my text in this little text box. And that will update uh, the category titles um, right inside of my different categories there. Um, now to get back I just click on the stage and it will get me back to my stage area. From there I can go to category 1, category row 1 and I can update the text there. However, the nice thing about this, if I double click in here you'll notice that it basically just has point values. Um, it does also have other objects like this box trigger that uh, has all the triggers and where it's going to jump to when it's clicked on. Um, those you don't have to update, but you, the nice thing about this is I don't have to go through each individual category one, row one, um, in order to actually update the content. I can come back to the stage and I can update a variable that's found on the stage. Now the way that you get to this variable is you basically just click anywhere in the stage, make sure no object is selected, um, and then in your properties, you'll notice right where it says ELB Game Show, there's these little brackets that if I hover over it, it says Open Actions. If I click on that, I have two tabs here. I have a Composition Ready and a Creation Complete. Uh, the Creation Complete basically runs some code that I don't recommend um, editing inside of here. That's basically if you wanted to load in any other sounds, you can do that. But uh, what I do recommend is coming into the Composition Ready. Now in the composition ready, this is a couple different variables that I can change. You'll notice right here where it says row one point value. This is the point value for row one. So if I decide I want to change that to, let's give it 400 for row one. Um, I can just hit control S or command S uh, on a Mac and then that will save it and close out the code window for me. And then I can hit control enter or command enter on a Mac. And then if I go to um, that game board now, You'll notice all of row 1 is now set to 400 points. If I select the object, hit uh, correct on that, it automatically updates at 400 points every time I get that question correct or that row 1 correct. And I can come back in here, go into the brackets here and change it, like change it back to 100 or whatever points I want to at that point. Now a couple other things that you can do is you can also set um, then these different game variables, you can set the number of questions that are going to be asked right now. It's, it's set as 15. If you change this to 10, um, all you have to do is basically move out the on the game board section. You basically move out these to the stage, anywhere off the stage, and uh, it would only have, or you would set it to only be 10 questions. And that gives you a little bit more flexibility if you're not going to use all 15 questions there. Okay, so now um, if I come down here, now if I come to question one, I have a couple different choices here. Let me stretch this out a little bit. We have our question one, question one choices, question one correct feedback, question one incorrect feedback. So really all I have to do, I could navigate to that question one with my timeline and see how it is all laid out here. Or I could actually just come into question one, double click on that. And this just basically shows me question one. So I just come in here, double click on the text, change out the header, uh, double click on the text here, change out the text, and then I can go ahead and import or let, add other objects onto this stage or import an image on this stage as well. So it's really flexible that way. It's a WYSIWYG environment and so you don't have to worry about coding or CSS placement or anything like that. Um, and now whenever I come to question one, so if I hit uh, control S or command S on a Mac and then uh, after it's done saving, if I preview it, well, as soon as I come to question one, let's go ahead and show that real quick. So I'm going to go to question one, and you can see there's my rectangle right there. So that's how I update question one. Well, if I wanted to update question one choices, which are the different choices available, I just double click on that movie clip to go to these different choices. Now this is where I can see question one A, B, C, and D, and this is where I can go in, double click on it to get to my text, 
and I can update the text here and change it to whatever text I want. So the choices you have to double click to get into the first section and then you have to double click to get into each choice that you want to update and then the submit button as well if you wanted to update that as well. Now, <clears throat> now if you wanted to, you don't have to actually, um, if you just want a couple different choices here, um, you can actually just come into, let me come back here, if you go into question one choices, um, you'll notice on the timeline here we have choices and if I scroll over a little bit more, this is where we also have our incorrect um, and then our, or sorry, correct and then our incorrect feedback. Well, inside of each choices, in order to choose which one is correct and which one is incorrect, all you have to do is click somewhere in the stage area here. Make sure you don't double click or else it'll take you back to the stage. But then I click on these brackets again. If I click on the brackets, there's a couple different choices that I can make. So you can see the first variable is multiple answers. You, this would basically allow you to have more than one answer. If it sets a false, then there should only be one answer. Now the next variables down at the bottom here allow you to decide which one is correct and which ones are incorrect. So let's say answer A is correct now. All I have, would have to do is change that to true and then change B to false. Uh, now if I don't want all four distractors, for example, I can change this to two distractors. And that will basically, when I preview this, let's go ahead and preview it now. I forgot to save it. Let's come back here, save this. And now if I preview it, you can see that only two choices are chosen and option A is what's correct now. I still need to go in and I need to change the text by double clicking in here, changing the text to whatever text I needed, here, needed it to be. But on the main timeline is where I can get into these brackets and change that. Now let's go ahead and try to change this to true. We're going to go into our multiple choice, change the distractors back to four. And now we're going to have two different choices be true. We're going to have A and we're going to have D be true. So if I hit uh, control save uh, or co sorry, control S or command S, it will save my project for me again. I can go ahead and hit control enter to preview it. And now if I come back into question one, we have all four choices back here. But you'll notice as soon as I select a choice, it basically selects it for me. Select another choice and I can see which of those choices are selected. And now it has a submit button. So if I select the submit button, if I selected both of those choices, then it will count as correct. If I selected only one of those choices, it will count it as incorrect or any other choice will count it as incorrect. So that's how you do multiple choices or even true or false. Basically, you would just come back in here uh, and then change this to two and then choose either the first one or the second one to be true. And that's uh, your true or false question right there, basically. Now, this, this um, you do the same thing from here on out for all of the different questions. So you need to update the question, but then you need to update question choices. And so by going into question two choices, Here's my question two choices. I basically select anywhere on the stage, come into my brackets, and then do the same thing here. Choose which one is correct, which ones are incorrect, and then go in and update the text on each of my choices, um, however I wanted to update that text basically. Now at that point, I could just come into my timeline, go over to the correct feedback and go in there, or I can come into correct question one, correct feedback, double click on that movie clip, and it will take me just into the correct uh, movie clip there so I can come in, add, uh, let's stretch out the text box here, but I can come in and add my question um, right inside of this text here. Or I can then insert other images, other content, uh, however I wanted to right inside of this correct feedback. And that will only show if they get a correct. Same thing with incorrect. So if I go to question one, incorrect feedback, it will basically um, allow me to add any incorrect feedback inside of there and uh, it will only show if the person gets it incorrect. And as I go through, I just do the same thing for questions 1 through 15. And anything that has the underscore before it, we uh, those are only if you wanted to change the visuals um, on those different objects and just be careful of how you change those visuals. Just notice that if you change the visuals on any of the feedback, it'll basically cascade to all of the feedback background. Um, and if you, otherwise, you'd have to break it apart 
uh, or ungroup it basically the different symbols or add your own graphics in there as well so all right so that's how you get started with the game shows and start updating the different questions possible choices how to make it into multiple selection as well as multiple correct um, and then or multiple selection and multiple correct or just true or false or anything like that okay so now from here when you're ready to actually publish this out and get it to um, another authoring tool or if you wanted to just get it on a website somewhere um, you would not take just all of these files basically what you would have to do is you'd come into uh, edge animate go to file and then go to publish and as soon as you do that it will actually publish into it'll just blink really quickly and it will publish into your published folder and inside of the web folder it'll have all of your content that you can just take this and then import it into um, your game or sorry import it into your authoring tool or put it on the website somewhere now if you wanted to you could also come back into here and go to file publish settings come into iBooks and then select iBooks and what will happen is it'll actually publish uh, a file that you can then import into iBooks author if you're working with iBooks author at all um, any edge animate deployment package this basically allows you to work with uh, um, InDesign so if you're bringing it inside of InDesign or Dreamweaver it's, it makes it a lot easier just to import in a deployment package um, inside of any other Adobe authoring tool so keep that in mind alright that's it so that's how you get started with the Edge Animates um, game show game this will once I publish it out it'll work perfectly on an iPad uh, Android tablets or anything like that and uh, you can then take that and um, get it out to your learners and go from there.